What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, you are watching TWA Motorsports and today, yes, I am soaked in sweat. You can kind of hear the rain going on outside. Guys, it is miserable out here, but we are continuing the work and we have a rear end back from a buddy of mine who is really well versed with setting up gears in these cars. We've got the rear end out of the Trans Am over there. We are gonna be swapping in to the Camaro. Now, I don't exactly know if we're gonna get that accomplished in this video, I'm sure gonna try, but uh, I got it back. It's got a set of 410s in it. We've got some other stuff to do. First of all, I've knocked all the dust and rust off this. I power washed it. I've hit it with a um, Scotch-Brite. I've hit it the rough spots with my grinder and the um, like a kind of a uh, wire brush. And so we are ready to paint this thing. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna bore you guys with uh, the process of painting because it's going to take me the course of a couple days to get two coats on this thing and make sure that we get all the stuff coated that we want to get coated guys i'm not going to concern myself with the backing plate out just the inside okay i just want to make it look a little nicer i may put a little on the center here but i don't think i'm going to do any anywhere else okay so i'm not going to concern myself with that but that is what my plan is i'm going to start with some por 15 off camera we're gonna knock this thing out real quick. I won't bore you with the time lapse, like I said, uh, but I will cut back in once I get it coated. I've also got some pieces that kind of hold like brake lines and stuff that I'm gonna be coating as well, and the sway bar um, attachment that I'll be coating off camera. So let me get that accomplished. Like I said, it's gonna take me a couple days and uh, we'll take a look at it when we're finished. Now, I told you I was gonna show you when I'm all finished, but this is after one coat of POR 15, and. Guys, honestly, it looks pretty good, but I'm gonna go over it a second coat. So kind of what I'm doing is, I had it upside down, painted one side uh, first night, flipped it over second night, painted the top. I just got through with that. Now, the third painting, I'm gonna flip it where the pinion is pointing up, or the yoke is pointing up. I'm gonna paint that side, and then I'm gonna flip it the opposite way and paint that side, and I'm gonna call that good. So that should be two full coats on it, and uh, I think it's gonna look pretty nice, then we'll move on. After two coats of paint, and I know there's some runs in it and whatnot, but believe me, it looks so much better than what it did. It's been drying. It's been a while since I started on this, to be honest with you. But we've got a new cover, a rear cover for this, to do a couple things. One, to make it look better. That's why I didn't paint this. And two, it adds some strength too. So I'm gonna go grab that. I'll list, of course, all this stuff that I'm using in the description down below, but um, I also painted the brake lines with some Rust-Oleum just to try to keep them nice. Um, you don't have to do that, it's just something I did. And um, I've been wheeling this thing around on my little cart by myself. So I can get it up here one end at a time on my jack stands, uh, but as far as like moving it by myself, I can't. So I've got a little dolly here that I put it on and I can kind of scoot it in and out of place, which will work great when we get to the point where we're going in the car. But let's get these 13 millimeters out and I'm probably gonna use a razor blade to scrape the edge and we're gonna try to scrape out so we don't get anything on the inside and then we'll grab the new piece that we need to put in. Guys, one thing about gear oil is it is about the nastiest smelling thing you'll ever smell in your life. Um, it is so bad. All right, yeah, you can see what I'm talking about. There's some old gasket material here that we need to clean out. But like I said, I'm trying to keep things away from the gears and, um, you know, just make everything work the way they're supposed to. One issue I will tell you that he had with this thing is getting the, um, he, he was having trouble because he had to move the bearings from side to side, I think. I think it's what it was. I'm, look guys, I'm, I don't install the rings. But, uh, and maybe he'll post in the comments because he watches the videos. He had some issues getting the C-clip back in and um, it seems to be a common issue once I read about it. But uh, either way, let's go ahead, get some brake clean. Let's clean this up. I'll probably wipe it down first and then we'll go over it with the razor blade a couple times and then uh, clean it again. Then we'll go grab our new stuff. I went over it once with brake clean. Probably need to get a new blade on this. But I generally like to grab a towel. You can see the, the extra from where we painted, kind of going over the edge. And I don't think that'll probably hurt anything. But let's get it out of the way so we know that it won't. I'm 
like I said, we're trying to scrape away from the rear end. Since he cleaned all that out when he did the gears. I think a lot of people use like a Rolock wheel on this and I'm just not a fan because it throws crap everywhere. I have one. I don't even know that I use it anymore. I used to use it on uh, deck, deck material for like blocks until my engine builder said don't do that. I'm going to replace this blade and then we're going to do it again and then chase it with some more um, brake clean here. Once we get it all cleaned off, our next step is to grab our gasket. So, I had really, really good luck with this, what they call lube locker gasket. And I'll list it in the description below as well, but it just seemed to work. No silicone or any crap like that. Um, what else is in there? Oh, a sticker. I don't need a sticker. So this thing goes on like that obviously pretty dummy proof right now this is what we're putting on next and it is a Mosier cap and so kind of how this works is it has main cap um, studs it's got a drain and it's got a fill and so uh, just a really nice piece I know TA makes one, uh, I've used their product before, it's a good product as well. I'm going to back, figure out what size this is, and back that off before we, it looks like a six millimeter. We're going to back these off a little bit and then we'll run them back in, we'll talk about that as we're installing it. But it also comes with bolts that you're going to need because your stockers won't be long enough, this thing's pretty thick, so it adds um, some rigidity to the rear end. Now, look, a 10 bolt's not a stronger end, but this will help, that's for sure. Now we're going to kind of align this and I back those off. I need a light, but I think we've got it lined up. I'm going to grab a bolt and we're going to start threading them in. Now, look, we've got to remember that there's some other stuff that goes on this. Oh, this has washers too, that's interesting. Okay. So what we're going to do is, let's start one up top. Oh, those washers fit perfectly in the hole. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a couple of these in just to get it snugged up. And then I'm going to have to get under the car because I don't remember where our little pieces go for like our e-brake holder. Um, there was a wiring harness up here. I'm not sure we can still use that. Not, I don't know. Um, well, the wiring harness we'll have to use, but there was like a block off plate that was up here. Not sure that'll work. So let me get these threaded in, or at least started all of them, and then we'll figure out which ones we need to take out in order to put our wire holders in place. I'm not 100% sure if the bolts were longer in the factory housing. They probably were, but one of these goes here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it like that and then see if we can thread this in on top. There's one of them. That doesn't look too bad. There's another one that goes over here and then there's a piece that goes up top I'm going to grab too. The piece up top would work if I trim it and when I say trim it like here and here for the ridges on the back of this. I don't necessarily know that we have to have it. It's just kind of a, it keeps the wires out of things. I may trim it and see kind of what we're dealing with, but I, I also need to go figure out where the other one goes. I know there's one more. I know there's one that goes down here on the other side of the housing, but let me trim and mess with this a little bit. We'll see if we can get it to fit. So by trimming those little ears off, I was able to make it work and I think I want this here I think I want it here for um, 
Yeah, in fact, I know I do. If we can make it work, we're gonna make it work. That'll just keep that wire from getting into anything. I'm gonna have to do a little touch up on the paint because I kind of jacked the paint up when I did that, but that's okay. Let's go see where these other two go. I know one goes in this corner. Or at least I think it does. Here's the other one. Kind of a long one. This is all meant for holding wire and probably not a bad idea to get underneath the car and take a look. I'm leaving the washer in there because there's an opening in that hole. And I actually have an extra washer that we're going to use let me look for another one. That one goes there, and then this one goes on the rear end over here. So, got to find the bolt. I got a majority of these situated. Um, I put a washer. I left the washer that came with the, the uh, bolts underneath, and then I put an extra washer on top that I just had to source on my own. I don't think it's necessary up here because this set's pretty flat, but this needs to go to 25 foot pounds and we're going to do it in a crossing pattern. So let's get our torque wrench set to 22 here or 25. Sorry. Um, I love this digital torque wrench. It's really nice. Let's get it set to 25. There we go, 25 foot-pounds. And we're going to start in the middle. We'll do the top first, then the bottom. Kind of like we're putting a wheel on, honestly. seems like a lot okay and so we're gonna do this on this entire rear end and I'll probably go back and do it again basically just double checking my work Now the way this is supposed to work is we're supposed to tighten these down by hand until they come in contact with the bearing cap. Okay, so there we are there. We'll do the other side. Should come in contact too. And then it's saying to torque them to five foot pounds or 60 inch pounds. Okay, you can see we got that in there. See, we got that in there. I ran these out beforehand. So let's get those down to 60 inch pounds. And once we do that, it says to tighten the uh, nut here to 20. Well, that ought to be interesting. We'll probably do that with the crow's foot. Let's get this down to inch pounds, get this down to 60 inch pounds, and um, we should be good. I got those to 60 inch pounds. Now to get these to 20, I'm going to use a crow's foot. 60 inch pounds is not very much. There we go. Now, um, I've got one other piece that we've got to set on here. Like I said, that other, um, Holder. 
wire holder goes right here like this, I think. And that's a 13 millimeter and it's got a, the screw on it's kind of like pointed. Probably got paint in there. It should be a 13. It wouldn't hurt to take pictures of this, that's for sure. I don't remember. I think this goes on like this, but I'm gonna loosely thread it in for now. That's also a 13. I'm gonna go grab my brake lines and we're gonna see where they set because if they set kind of differently, then I'll know that I've got this in the wrong spot. I feel like this can kind of move one way or the other, but I don't know. Let me go grab my brake lines. Well, this looks right. Don't know which way this one goes though. I feel like this is possibly on backwards. No, maybe not. Does that look right? Maybe this is right. I'm not really gonna know. Let's grab our lines. Now, of course, like everything else I do, I go a little too deep and I decided to buy new brake lines. Look, the torque, um, or the four channel rear end has six total brake lines, okay? You have a front, a rear, right, left, uh, and the, you'll have a rear, a front and rear, right and left, so that's four. And then you'll notice you have two lines back here. So what this will say is we have, that one's not it, that one doesn't even have a label. So those will be to a brake line, here we go. Rear outer, so that's gonna go over here. And then rear center, that's gonna be this guy. I just don't know which end goes in that end or this end. Maybe the same and it may not matter. Looks like one's shorter than the other though. We may have to wait on this until we get it in the car. I don't think we're gonna have to wait. Um, we may have to wait to put the keepers on, but these are the exact same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the line. We'll snug it up under the car because we may have to turn it and see, but we can at least get it started. And this one goes the opposite way. It's interesting. There it goes. Brick line should thread in nice and easy. I think this is right. We may have to grab the old calipers to test, but this seems right to me. I think I'd feel much better about how tight leaving this for now uh, until we get the other rear end out. That can still move. I'm just gonna press this down. That can still move, perfect. Got them started. So we got new stainless lines. All right, it's go time. We got this thing off the ground. I've got it supported with jack stands on what little bit of frame there is back there, okay? We're gonna need the rear end to relax. 
So we're gonna have to put the jack stand somewhere else other than under the rear end. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go grab my impact. Let's get the wheels off this thing so we have a little better access. I think where we're gonna start after the wheels is we're gonna mess with the sway bar end links, get those off first, which I will show you, and uh, we'll go from there. Once you get the wheel off, you've got pretty good access to your sway bar end link, which is a 13 millimeter, both top and bottom. Look, if this thing's super rusty, mine's not terrible. I'm gonna clean this up on my uh, grinder over there, but let's get a 13 uh, impact on the bottom, 13 wrench on the top. Let's get it out of the way on both sides. Now that we have those loose, you can see our sway bar is, well, I guess it, you can't really tell it's loose, but we're gonna take the 13s out that hold the sway bar to the rear end. I'm gonna take these arches off the top. These should come loose as well. I repainted these on the other rear end. So we'll be installing the new painted ones, but let's get this out of the way next. Now we got a couple different options to go next, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the 11 millimeters out of the drive shaft strap, because we obviously are gonna have to pull the drive shaft loose. Now, look, sometimes it's easier if you leave it out of gear and uh, use an impact to take those out. You can zip them out pretty quick and the impact works fast enough where you don't have to worry about it turning on you. Uh, so basically, like right now, let me see if I can get them this this day. We can turn. Oh, of course, it's not going to turn. Uh, but I can turn the drive shaft because it's in neutral and the e-brake's not on. So let's get those 11 millimeter. There's two of them on each side. So four total, get that strap out of the way. And we'll use our pry bar to push our drive shaft forward and out of the rear end. You can see we've got the drive shaft straps there on the ground, the four 11 millimeters and the two straps. I've got it pushed out. I use my pry bar to kind of pry it forward. It is out of place. Now, we're either gonna move on, I'm trying to decide whether I wanna move on to the uh, bolts for the um, torque arm, which I think, I, I, I think that's what I wanna do next. And I believe they're 21 millimeter, both top and bottom. Once I got those 21, and they are 21s by the way, once I got those two loosened up and pulled out, just know that you have to drop the rear end down enough to get the bolt out of the top. It comes through the top. There is a washer up there too, so make sure you get all that. And then you can see that it pulled away from the rear end, and now you can see that the drive shaft is kind of hanging in there. So the other thing I had to do is I had the rear end supported in the middle here. I had to move up my jack to put a little more pressure on the front uh, for a couple reasons. One, it's going to want to balance a little better like that. And um, two, it gave me enough angle to get those bolts out. They were kind of snug with it in the original spot. So now I'm going to move on to, I think, that the, the uh, torque arm here. Now, normally, guys, you don't have to take this out on both sides, but I am going to do it. I think it is a 21 millimeter also. It's a 21 on the outside, and I want to say it's an 18 on the inside. And so let's get it out next. I'm gonna take it completely out of the car. You don't necessarily have to do this. You have to take this one loose because obviously it's hooked to the rear end, but the other one you could potentially just like move it up. I guess we could just zip tie it up, but I'm gonna go ahead and take them, take it completely out. Now that we got the pan hard rod out of the way, I'm going to attempt to pull these locks out like that. We're gonna try to unplug this. You only have to unplug one side, I guess. I don't know why I unplugged both. Uh, but that's the one for the rear end that we need out of the way. And I'm gonna move on. I think I'm gonna go to the shock next, which I believe is a 22 millimeter. We'll get that one out. And then these are three quarters now because they're a replacement. Uh, but we do need to get this. Uh, I've got the e-brake set. I need to un like turn the e-brake off and then we need to push this off to get the e-brake cable loose. So I got the shocks loose with that 22 millimeter. I started to let the rear end down and you notice that the spring just fell out. So that's fine. We can get that. And then, like I said, I need to turn the e-brake off so we can get that cable loose next. And then we're gonna get those three quarters, the top and bottom of the lower control arm. And aside from the brake line, which I was waiting for last uh, and routing the e-brake cables out, the reason I was waiting on the brake lines is obviously it's gonna make a mess, but um, we're getting really close to having it out. To get this e-brake cable loose, we are gonna to have to pinch, we're gonna to have to go grab a pair of needle nose pliers, 
pinch on the inside of these little clips and release this line. Once we release it, we can push it through and then unhook it. It's just a loop on the front side. Once it's loose, we'll be able to fold it through. But it's important that the e-brake is not on at this point. Now, in the last video, when I removed the rear end from the Trans Am, I unhooked it here. But because we unhooked the main piece there, we can leave all our wiring in place. The only thing we have to do is get this e-brake cable off and that'll allow us to um, thread the cable off of what we just installed. You can see those holders that kind of hold it out of the way. We'll be able to thread it off of that and um, get these cables. They are, they're gonna obviously stay on the car. It's wanting to fight me the whole way. I got it out um, by looking in the other side, but it's not wanting to let me get it loose until I get this brake line loose. So I was trying to get everything kind of loose before we started putting brake fluid everywhere. But now we need to go grab a brake line wrench and I generally use a flat blade screwdriver to flip these off, but we will get a brake line wrench, get this loose. And then once it's loose and starting to thread out, we'll flip that off and then we'll be able to get this bracket loose and hopefully be able to thread it off. I wanted to paint this because remember I cut it so we could put those relocation brackets on. So let's go get the brake line wrench. We're gonna do that here and the other side and we should be free at that. Oh, I take that back. We gotta get the brake line wrench for the center lines as well. There's two of them since it's a traction control car. Got the brake lines loose. Of course they're dripping all over the floor making a huge mess. Um, we got the e-brake cables loose. So now all we need to do is feed them through these openings. But on the other side, there's a zip tie and I think that's actually a factory zip tie. Just make sure that you go through and cut those and then we need to thread that one. There's two openings that it goes through. So we'll thread it out. And then guys, we are ready to roll this thing out from under this car. Not too much work. A mess, but not too much work. I'm gonna have to grab some towels here. I'm still waiting for a couple pieces to dry before we go completely back together, but I'm ready to swing this thing under here. And kind of my plan is I'm gonna get it off this dolly. I'm gonna have Cam, I'm gonna lift up an end. I'm gonna have Cam help me and I actually may just set it on jack stand. Well, no, never mind. My jack stands are occupado. So uh, I'm just going to lift it up. I'm going to have him set the jack underneath it, and then we'll get it positioned. Once we do that, though, I want to put some rubber caps on this because my plan is I'm still painting the calipers, and um, I'm going to try to hook these brake lines up when we get up in there. Uh, I'm also waiting for these two bolts to dry because I painted those. Uh, so hopefully we can get those in later. But... Anyway, I want to cap these off because once I hook those up, chances are it's going to start to run out of this. And so I'm trying to do away with that. And my clamps are occupied on the dually. I bought some clamps to do this, but that's probably not going to work right now. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get it moved over to the jack here, which I don't think will be an issue. See if we can get it somewhat balanced and start lifting it up. And I think we'll start with the lower control arms. Just kind of see where we can get. I'll talk you through it as we go. So I lifted it up on one end with the towel under the other. Cam moved the dolly. I set it on the jack. Got a towel there. Not too bad. It's not 100% balanced, but it's balanced enough where I can roll it under the car. Okay. And start to kind of lift it up and maybe get some stuff attached. Uh, I think we're going to start. Remember, we got to thread our e-brake cable through. Uh, and actually, guys, it went through these lines. It, it actually went underneath this and then through here, this one that goes to this side. And the one that goes to the other side went underneath here and went into this and then through that. So we'll try to do that as we're going in with it. I don't think that, I don't think that'll be an issue. You got a pretty good start here. Uh, it moved a little bit on my jack when I was trying to square it up, but I think we'll be okay for now. So what we need to do is I painted these. These were those brackets that we had to cut in order to install our lower relocation brackets. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in. They're kind of a pain to get the e-brake cable over. So what I think I'll do is I'll go ahead and put them around the e-brake cable. And then while the rear end's still down, we'll go ahead and put our upper bolt through. So basically this goes through here, okay? And then we will have our spacer. It goes in here so this doesn't collapse and then the nut on the other end. And uh, 
I think it'll make our life a little easier to do all this down as opposed to trying to get it up there and doing it while the rear end's moving around. To get the shock started, and that'll keep the rear end from rocking until my bolt's dry. But now we have ample room to slide that torque arm up into place and get it bolted. But I think for now, um, I'm going to see if I can get my brake lines lined up. Or in, I don't know. Kind of back and forth on that, actually, until I get the torque arm mounted. I think I'll wait on that. But I can go ahead and plug our plug in. Right? So this guy right here with the lock. And I'm going to put my pan hard rod in, which is just the two... Uh, well, it's 18 on one side, 21 on the other. Let's just go ahead and get it installed as well because that won't hinder anything that I'm doing back here. I did go ahead and hook up my drive shaft since I have a little better access here without the torque arm on. So I put the straps in there. I'm going to go ahead and torque those. 16 foot-pounds, so hardly any. And uh, if you'd like, you could put a little blue Loctite on there. I generally don't and never had an issue, but 16 foot-pounds. Okay, that's not a lot. I am going to go ahead and put 66 foot pounds on the shock because we're done there and it doesn't articulate. The rest of this stuff will have to load the suspension. But um, yeah, those two things. And then, of course, you're going to have to put the emergency brake on to torque that, uh, the drive shaft that is. And then I did go ahead and clamp my new brake lines, my inner brake lines in, but I don't love the way they're moving. So I did lock them down. Well, I just ran them in by hand here. I think I'm going to lock them in here. But I'm going to let the suspension down a little and we got to put that 13 back in. I'm going to adjust them up top. I'm just, I don't love the angle they're at. They just seem like they've got a lot of bend in them. I don't want, I don't want them to have that much bend. So uh, I'm going to do those couple things and then hopefully my other stuff will be dry at that point. And we can move on because I think we're just about finished with all the stuff like that we can do. The next thing I did was I told you I was going to move my lines around. I actually went ahead and hooked them up and then just used a wrench to turn them after I got them somewhat snug and then I locked them down. So these are those new inner brake lines. It sucks that you have two of them, but you can see that's the best shape I could get them in and uh, gives them enough room to move. The other thing is this kit comes with keepers to hold these lines up against a metal tab. While those work great up in that top one, the one with the 13 millimeter, which by the way, I put the 13 back in. Try to hook up your lines before you put the rear end in, okay? Just like I had them because it's hard to get up there. Um, but then I use the factory clips here because those other ones were too loose and the line was kind of walking around. But now they're locked in nice and steady. And we can either move on to the sway bar or we can go grab our new rotors and our painted calipers. I went ahead and started my sway bar in the factory D-rings. This is just my stock sway bar. I just resprayed it. Uh, actually, I painted it with POR 15. And um, so now that I've got those started, I, they're not tight, as you can see. We're going to go ahead and put our factory mounts back in up front here, which I cleaned up part of them. i got to clean up the other part. I cleaned up the bolt and painted it to kind of get some of the rust off of it. We'll put it back in place, and then we'll snug it up a little bit, and then we'll worry about tightening the center. I got the sway bar end link started first. That kind of helps hold things. And then I centered this up. There's actually an opening on the bottom of this, and there's a spot on the bottom of the rear end that centers with. So I've just snug this down by hand pretty snug. I'm not going to torque it any tighter than that. I think we're good. Uh, I'll see if I can find a torque spec on it. If I can, I'll let you guys know. But we've got that sway bar in place. Definitely looks a lot better. I found a torque spec for the, where the bracket, and it says 41 foot-pounds. That seemed really tight to me. I did 30. And that seemed really tight. So I don't know, guys, if you can get away with 40 for that uh, basically U-bolt that bolts around and holds the sway bar to the rear end. But uh, 41 is what I found. These are 16. I generally tighten these up till the centers won't spin, and you're generally good there. Let's move on to the brakes, which we have the rotors right there. No surprise here. Power stop, rear, driver's side. Pretty dummy proof. Uh, zinc coated. They're not going to rust. They're going to look nice for a long, long time. Let's get this in place. Now I'm going to be replacing. I scraped all the paint off this, by the way. They look pretty good now that we've coated them. But what we need to do is we need to replace and grease these up. So you should 
when you get pads, which we got, you should get new hardware, which we've got. We're going to have to snap in. Uh, obviously new pads, and then you'll get new rubber boots, which we're going to be replacing. So while I've got this out, I hate doing this because then I get grease all over my freshly painted parts, but it's good to replace them. A lot of times they get nasty and brittle and cracks. We'll put this on, get it seated. That. I'm going to kind of pull it down, it should unfold. And then we are going to get some caliper grease. If you have any kind of corrosion, scrub it off. We don't, so that's good. It's a good sign. And then we push it back in and make sure that it seats and moves freely. Another reason I keep those on is I can get paint on them. You can see I got paint all over them and it doesn't bother me. Oh, I've got chunks of paint where I was scraping. So we'll do that to both these. Oh, see what I did? You're gonna have to wipe them down afterwards if you're picky like me. But we'll get this other side and then we'll get the hardware clipped in. For the hardware, all we have to do is get it the right way and it clips into place here. Well, Apparently I'm not, there we go. Only goes in one way. Like that. And then, you, Power Stop sends you brake caliper grease, but I generally keep my own. Get that in there. And I like to put a little caliper grease in these slides. because it keeps the pads moving freely. Now you don't have to do that right now. It'd be nice if I had a little smaller brush to do that actually. And now we're ready to bolt this thing on with the factory bolts. Started one of these, but I'm going to back them off and put a little blue Loctite on them. Just for peace of mind. The factory, I clean these all off, but the factory uses Loctite on these. So might as well do it like the factory did it. We'll do that on both. Then I gotta find the torque spec for it. Once you get those in, they get torqued to 74 foot pounds. And just to jump ahead, the actual caliper guide bolt uh, goes to 27. So I'll try to remember that when we're putting the caliper on, but we've got to put, uh, I don't know, we'll probably put the brake line on later. Now we're on to the caliper itself, and we need to put our new hardware in, which should go, I think like this maybe. Other way around. Hmm. Act like it wants to fit in there any certain way. There it is, like that. Seems like it's gonna rub against the piston. Maybe it'll push, I guess it'll push back. All right, that's how that goes in, just like that. I'm gonna scrape this off and this off and then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with an impact and get this loose and we're gonna put our new line on now now I like to use an impact on this because it zaps it off relatively quickly and you don't have to fight 13 millimeter now look we're gonna get some brake fluid no way around it 
That's why I got a rag here. Brake fluid, as you guys know, is very, very, very corrosive. So once we get that off, we're got, we have to use that bolt. We got to. It looks like I'm gonna have to peel it off, which sucks. Maybe I can get that to stay. So you got these little crush washers that like to be stubborn and stay in place. I'm gonna have to peel that thing off. But we also got new replacement ones that we're gonna need one on each side. And we're gonna need our line, which I don't have over here either. Once you get that off there, we're ready to go. I cleaned up our bolt on the wheel over there. We need to put two of these on. One here, then there, and then one underneath, obviously. Sandwich them together. Now, if you can hold this, it'd be a good time to go ahead and torque it. This actually torques to 30 foot-pounds. I know that sounds like a lot, and this is an aluminum caliber, but uh, that is what it gets. So I'm going to attempt to hold it and torque it to 30 foot-pounds real quick so we don't have to do it on the car, whether I can or not. Not really sure. I think I probably can. Okay, yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little caliper grease here on the piston. I'm gonna put a little bit on the inside here. This will keep our pads from rattling around. And our pads, there's two different ones. You have one with a wear indicator. That one goes in the back. We'll put those on. So, let me show you here the front one in then I won't be able to show you the back one but well help if I put it in the right way so there and there and then once we get the back one in make sure I got the right caliper here oh I've got the caliper for the other side actually the bleeder will go up so this is the one for the passenger side so I'll go knock it out off camera This is what we're going to be using, 7590. It does not require any friction modifier because this isn't a clutch style rear end. Now, GM did come out with the service bulletin that said, if you have some clunking to add some, but it is not a clutch style rear end and it's not required. But I took the factory fill, even though we have a fill right here, it's not real easy to get to because the pan hard. So I'm going to try to fill it from right here. It takes 1.7 quarts. So it's almost going to take two. I don't know. I let the rear end down. I don't know if we got enough room to squeeze the whole one in, but we'll give it a shot. Now, look, I filled it until it started to come out the hole and put the plug back in. But I'll tell you guys, you probably need three bottles, even though it takes 1.75 because the angle you're having to put it in, I was basically getting half in at a time. So uh, you're probably going to need three bottles. And look, we're going to have to change it anyway after a few hundred miles. So we're going to need some extra anyway, but we are finished. I'm going to go ahead, lock the wheels in place, get this thing setting on the ground, and we're going to attempt to uh, move it so I can clean up all the mess underneath. I'm, gonna, I'm hopefully going to try to not roll through all the crap that's underneath it, but we'll just have to see. I just want to make sure it goes in gear. Okay, Jason, I know you're watching this video. So far, so good. It moved out of the shop, but Guys, we're gonna test it over the course of, I mean, they say you need about a 500 mile break in on these. I don't know if I'm gonna do that much, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna drive it to work a couple days, which is about 30 miles one way, 30 miles back. But it'll give it some time to set and completely cool off and then get warm on the way home. I'm gonna circle the block and if anything happens, I'll break back in on the end of this video. But guys, that is it. If you did enjoy this install of the 410 rear end, Please like always go down there and smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are not subscribed, go down there, hit that subscribe button. Of course, like always ring that bell notification. Uh, that will notify you every time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next.